Hey guys, what's up? I'm CJ and welcome back to my galaxy. Today I'm watching the last season of the Umbrella Academy. I am a massive fan of the Umbrella Academy and I'm so sad that it's ending, but it has to end eventually. And even though it didn't get eight seasons, it got four, which is great. And I think my cat's scratching at my door. If you can hear that, I'll let her in in a second. But I would like to say my theories. I get the feeling we're going to start off the season with Lila and Diego. Oh my god, my cat. Luna. She just needed to be let in right this second. And there's Willow. How cute. Curled up and asleep. How about you go to sleep too? Night, night. As I was saying, I think I have a feeling Diego and Lila might not still be together in like one big happy family. And I'm going to be sad. I don't, I don't know. I just get the feeling that maybe they're divorced or separated or whatever the hell and they're co-parenting their kid. It looks like five is supposed to be like 19. They've done like a six year a time skip or something apparently and I'm not looking forward to that. Apparently I saw on their Instagram, the Umbrella Academy Instagram, that they posted like the first 10 minutes of episode one and I didn't watch it because I didn't want spoilers obviously. If I'm gonna watch the whole episode, I wanna watch the whole episode in one sitting. Which is what I'm about to do. Other theories, I I don't know. I just can't believe from the trailer that Luther seems to be a stripper. But also that kind of makes sense. Allison, if she gets a redemption arc, which I know for a fact she will, I don't want her to have a redemption arc. Never going to forgive her what, for what she did to Luther. One other theory that I had was that maybe the post credit scene in season three with Ben, you know, like the nice Ben, was going to actually be the ending of season four that we already know the ending because it looks like from the trailer that Ben was actually in jail. So how do we get from point A to point B? I don't know. Maybe that's because we haven't seen the events in between yet and we're not, we're going to, but we've already seen the ending of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Ben is in season three is Ben of season four at the end of season. You guys get what I mean. Yeah, that's my other theory. What other characters are there? Victor? Um... I don't know what Victor's going to be up to. I have no predictions for that, but I want to know how he ended up talking to Reginald Hargraves this time in the same way that Klaus did in the last season in season three, which I also find interesting and absolutely hilarious that Klaus is now a hypochondriac. He's very anxious that he's going to die because his immortality powers are gone. So I'm very excited to see that. So without further ado, let's go and watch the first, the last season, the first season, the last season of the Umbrella Academy. Vix? Don't tell me Victor owns this. Does he own like a hotel? That would be so cool, man. Okay, so I just finished watching episode one and it's so normal, but there's something just not quite right about it because there's not, you know, they don't have their powers, it's the wrong timeline. And it's so interesting, the storyline with Lila and Five, I love that duo. It's like enemies to friends, I love it. And I, I love them in season three as well. Just that like character arc for relationship dynamic with those two. Also feels like a, a repeat with Diego and Lila and him being jealous of five. Even though there's nothing going on, it does feel like that. And I wasn't quite right about Diego and Lila, but I also kind of was because their relationship is on the brinks, you know, as, as it is. It's Diego and Lila, what do you expect? First mention of Jennifer as well. Um, Jennifer, I, I think it was Jennifer. It, I freaked out when I heard it. So it has to be Jennifer, right? And it is that guy's daughter. That guy. I don't remember his name. I don't remember the character's name. I don't remember the actor, but I do know the actor because, you know, he's in everything. I can already tell that it's going to be a really good season. I don't know if the finale is going to be good, obviously, because I haven't watched it yet. But it's really good. The vibes are great. I feel like the vibes are a lot better than season three. It feels a lot more like season two than season three, I would say, which I actually quite love because season two is my favorite out of all four of the seasons so far. I haven't watched all of season four, but we'll see if season four beats season two. I also feel really bad for Luther. He still somehow has managed to go back to the academy and not leave and grow up properly. Also, where's Sloane? <laughs> we still don't know where Sloane is and I'm gonna need to know. Also, before I go into talking about the second episode and going to watch the second episode, I'm so intrigued with this Jean and Jean characters and their little weird cult conspiracy theorists. 
I love them and I feel like I'm sitting in on one of those crazy conspiracy theory groups, you know, the, the ones that talk about lizard people. I feel like I'm right there with them. Uh, but it's tripping me up because <laughs> obviously in real life I don't agree with those people. But, you know, in this one I'm like, oh, but what if the real life people have a point because no, wait, but they're not. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like not trip up myself and trick myself into being a flat earther accidentally, you know. Anyway, on to episode two. Okay, so don't watch episode two while eating. That's a really bad idea. I think I'm going to throw up too. <laughs> Do you want to say how difficult it is to have your favorite character be the immortal one? And do you know how many questions I have? There's four episodes left. And I have more questions than answers. Mm. Ah. <laughs> so I finished watching episode three. And I have so many questions still for this series. And I don't know how they're going to end it in the three episodes. I'm really concerned that the ending is not going to be like a satisfactory ending or anything. Because there is so much... That they need to get through for answers and it, it feels like they've been very ambitious with this entire season it 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 has to be 10 episodes it should have been 10 episodes not just six and i don't really know why they went 10 episodes for season one 10 episodes for season two 10 episodes for season three six episodes for season four that doesn't make any sense why didn't why don't you just go with the format that the, was working why would you do that? And the CGI has always been kind of bad, but it was it was really odd to see Ben's powers with that really bad CGI again. I think it's supposed to kind of look like that because it's supposed to mimic like a comic book, but it's just, it's so bad. I just, I can't, their budget is so small for CGI and it's so obvious. A theory for the rest of the series is that I'm pretty sure Reginald Hargreaves knows the timeline that the Umbrella Academy was in, not just the Sparrow Academy, simply because, um, how does Abigail know, Abigail, I also need to talk about Abigail, how does Abigail know that Luther protected her on the moon, uh, Victor has a love of the violin, and Allison, what does Allison have to do with her, I don't remember, but she said something about Allison as well, and it was so nice to hear Abigail talk for the first time, I did not expect her to sound like that. I, I really like Abigail's character and it kind of feels like the mother they never had. I know they had Grace, but at the same time, like, God, I wish they were raised, the Umbrella Academy was raised by Abigail and not Reginald. Anyway, on to episode four. <sighs> My cats are staring at me like I'm a crazy person, which is fair because I am. That, I mean, it should have been expected that he, <gasps> Reggie, no, <gasps> right through the skull. <gasps> oh, I'm going to need a minute. I'm like, I've barely even started the episode. <gasps> oh my God. Episode four and... <laughs> yeah, um, exactly that. Catch you in the next episode. Time of Death on the Umbrella Academy, episode 5. Time, 28 minutes. Just ruined my favourite show. For what? For what? What did you gain from this? I can't believe, I can't believe they did that. I can't believe they did that. That was not necessary in any way. It wasn't, there was, that, that genuinely ruined the show for me. I, I, I don't even need to say what happened in this episode. That was not, no. What does that amount to in the entirety of this? I, what was the point?
Like you ruined your entire show in when with one scene. Can't believe it. I can't I can't believe they ruined the show. Just because I uh, there was no point. I can't I haven't even finished the series yet. Like I have one episode to go. And what I I I don't even what was the point? Anyway, we don't talk about episode five of the Umbrella Academy. God, I'm glad it wasn't most of the episode because I think I would have drowned, <laughs> drowned in the series. I would have been fighting the creators of this show because I can't believe that happened. I can't believe it. I mean, I'm in genuine shock that they would just it, it, it's not even a relationship you can make fun of, like Allison and Luther. That was genuinely the worst decision they could have made for the show. Genuinely the worst decision. I think I get a little bit too attached to shows. I hate it here. <laughs> okay, so after finishing this season four last night, I started scrolling through social media and boy... Is the fandom on fire? People are not happy. I was scrolling through the Instagram of the official Umbrella Academy Instagram, right? Blue tick, whatever the hell you need to be verified, right? There is maybe a handful of positive comments like, oh, you, um, but I love the Umbrella Academy. I can't believe it's over. And the Umbrella Academy Instagram is replying back saying, I'm so sorry, we broke you and it was such a sad ending and whatnot but other people are like what was that <laughs> that was the worst season we've ever had from this whole series and I have to agree it's <laughs> it is definitely the worst season I will say a lot of people are saying that they don't like the ending but I like the ending I think it's the only thing that made sense a lot of people are saying it's the trope of like just kill them off just kill them all off, get it over and done with, get rid of it, it's the easy way out. I would say no, they're definitely set up for the ending at the beginning, especially with the handler saying it's not the end of everything, just the end of something. And now we know that Commission 5 was the reason for that. I would say everything that led up to the ending was a complete and utter mess because... It was, it was six episodes. I'm trying to like gather my thoughts because I'm like, I'm incredibly angry at this series finale because it had so much potential. The main major plot points of the series make sense for the other seasons that have happened, what we've already seen. I get it. They've definitely planned for what was going to happen. I can definitely see that. But filling in the gaps between those major plot points, it's, what did they do? <laughs> What happened? I liked episodes one and two when they kind of were didn't have their powers and were starting to get their powers back. I, I as much as I did not appreciate the fact that I was eating while I was watching them all throw up, I wish there was a warning on that episode. Um, I did enjoy the fact that their family dynamic and that very their that scene specifically felt very family like, very found family, adopted family, whatever. That happens on family road trips. People throw up, you know, and that makes sense. Baby Shark, as the theme song of the whole series, made sense until it kept going and now it's stuck in my head. That I hated. People don't really like the fact that the soundtrack throughout the whole series was really good and all they could come up with in season four was Baby Shark. I would have liked it if it hadn't just kept going. I think they could probably, if they wanted to do that, they probably could have chosen... I don't know, Cocomelon or some other better, less annoying song. You know, Baby Shark is less annoying than Cocomelon. Some better song would have been better. You guys get what I mean. I half agree with the fandom on that. Half, like, it was, it was strung out too long and it should have stopped at some point. As much as the Allison and Klaus dynamic came out of left field, I did like their dynamic. I just wish they didn't shove it in there like it existed this entire time like Allison always bails out Klaus because she doesn't 
she's never done that in the series before to my recollection i rewatched the entire series just before the new season came out and i don't recall allison bailing out klaus and I, I just wish they hadn't pretended that it happened, it's happened before and just shoved it in there. Allison, I feel like, had she not acted the way she did in season three to Luther specifically, had that one scene with Allison and Luther been taken out, I think it would have been better for Allison's like redemption arc in season four because she was a genuinely good character. If you ignore the whole dynamic between Allison and Luther, I reckon I reckon it was pretty good, you know. I like Allison. I'm she's not my favorite character. She's just a little bit too angsty for my liking, but you know, she's good. I understand why a lot of people like her and have her as her favorite character as their favorite character. I'm really glad Victor and Allison made up. Uh Klaus, Allison, Luther, Victor. I liked their when I was trying to figure out like all the characters in my head when Luther, Klaus and Allison were on the, was sitting watching Diego Five and Lila's whole love triangle, which is probably the most frustrating thing I've ever watched in my life at their house. So me, so messy, Klaus, Luther and Allison. Messy, gossiping, love that. I, uh, that would be that was my reaction to the whole thing as well so obviously let's talk about the elephant in the room yeah there were really good aspects to this season and I could definitely see the potential to make an amazing finale but Lila and Five what happened apparently I've seen Steve Blackman or people saying I haven't seen the original interview but I've been seeing people say that in an interview he said that he wanted a love interest for Five this whole obsession with romance and sex in mo media, movies, whatever, films, it's like a parasite on good characters. It doesn't need to have romance. You know what? If they want to like take the season off for just a, a little bit and cut out those scenes and re-upload it to Netflix, I'd be good. You know, I think it if it was re-edited just a little bit, there's still massive plot holes and unanswered questions in the series, but it'd be substantially better if they cut out the whole points with Lila and Five. You're telling me Five spent 45 years in the apocalypse thinking nothing about nothing else than survival and the survival of his family, and suddenly it takes only seven years for him to completely ditch them to fall in love. No! That doesn't make any sense for Five's character. Obviously, I'm overall very, very disappointed in the finale of this season. And I've seen a lot of people talking about the fact that it might be to do with the writer's strike. But I have another point that I want to add on to it is that... Let's start from the beginning, right? For the writer's strike. I believe, if I remember correctly, the writer's strike started when they were just about to start filming the whole season four of The Umbrella Academy. They'd already written the script, I think. They hadn't filmed it and they were going to go ahead with production. But the thing is, when it comes to scripts and production, rewrites on the script happen throughout the process. For every single film, movie, show, whatever, it always happens rewrites. And that's why the writer's strike affects the entire industry so much. And the fact that writers deserve a lot more money when they're producing, when they're a part of a production, especially as big as say like the Umbrella Academy, they deserve a lot more. They're a very integral part of the production because they're constantly there, constantly helping the director and the producers and whatnot, helping them rewrite and figure out things that might not be working because, hey, we don't have these props, we don't have this setting for this date and this has gone wrong. So they rewrite the script as they're going with production. So that's why the writer strike definitely affected in some way season four but what i think is that they used ai to do rewrites between the writer's strike and actually ending up filming i think and don't quote this is don't quote me on this this is for entertainment purposes only this is only speculation don't sue me or anything right so i think steve blackman was like what do i do while i'm waiting for my production to start what do i do with the script i gotta make it perfect he takes it to rewrite it and puts it through an AI system, you know, a completed script, puts it through an AI system. And that's why there's little things about the characters that feel kind of like uncanny valley when you're looking at it. Because first of all, Luther, 
his, I've seen a lot of people talking about this, Luther's powers only made, gave him super strength. It didn't change his body into like the half ape body, you know? That was Reginald Hargreaves and his serum for Pogo, that whole thing. And there was an entire storyline. In fact, it was brought up twice in season one and season two, brought up twice what happened to him. And suddenly it's been forgotten and it comes back with his marigold. It genuinely does not make any sense that that happened. That's also why Five likely didn't feel quite like Five and didn't have that chaotic part of his character. It's also why Klaus's character and his character development really fell flat because I can almost guarantee you there were certain scenes that they put through AI. Not the whole thing, but there's certain scenes and that's and they've pulled information from the previous seasons because that's what AI does. It doesn't come up with anything original. It pulls information from all the databases that they know that have the words like Umbrella Academy, for example. It'll pull all the information and put it into some semi-coherent script piece of writing that you can use and then edit from there. In certain situations it can work, in very very rare situations it can work, but in this situation definitely not and it's also um, not good for writers, you know, it's exploitation. I think I kind of want to do an entire video and let me know if you guys want to see this an entire video on how and why I think Steve Blackman or the writers of the Umbrella Academy put the script through an AI system or at least some of the scenes that they wanted to rewrite because there are things that don't add up in this season that make me think that they've just pulled information from the previous seasons and didn't look back over it. And that's, you know, when you read AI and it just doesn't make sense, like it's almost there, but not quite. And there's something very uncanny about it. There are scenes, like I said, with Luther and with Five and with Klaus and with Ben and Jennifer, which by the way, I actually really enjoyed the whole storyline, but it was so rushed with Ben and Jennifer. There should have been 10 episodes in total. Once again, why was there not 10 episodes? Because it would have filled out a lot of questions anyway. That was why it all felt really odd because they've been, they've put it through an AI system. I can almost guarantee you that's what happened. There was no writers available to Steve Blackman and he was impatient and didn't want to write it in himself because he got lazy or something, I don't know. But I'm gonna do an entire video on it, so let me know if you guys want to see that. Back to the whole 10 episode thing and the unanswered questions. Um, One of them, one of the biggest unanswered questions, two of them actually, Abigail and Reginald, where are they from? That was one of the things I was really anticipating. I wanted to find out they were from the moon or something, right? And the, the world was destroyed. That's all we really know, and that for some reason Abigail created the marigold and the other thing to do with Jennifer, I don't remember what it's called or how to pronounce it, honestly. And then, why was Jennifer in the squid? Did they try to kill her via squid and it didn't work? I don't, and also, why is she more powerful? How is she more powerful than anyone else? Is it because she can cause the apocalypse or the end of the world? Is that why? Does she have powers? How come that particle chose her? And is she, was she born in the same way that the Marigold kids were? Like, was it a spontaneous pregnancy? I have so many questions about Jennifer and Ben, and I have so many questions about Reginald and Abigail. There were so many unanswered things. There was, there were some things that people are asking in the fandom right now that, like, questions of, like, what happened to Sloan and what happened to Ray that I feel like is implied that they definitely should have gone into it more than they did but I think we do have answers for like Sloan I've seen someone say this that um Reginald replaced um Sloan with Abigail like sacrificed Sloan for Abigail personally I feel like that makes more sense um than Sloan just disappearing and then Ray I feel like it was really out of character for them so that was really weird that he just walked out. I feel like there needed to be some sort of flashback there. More, There was not enough, also another reason that I think it was done by AI, there was not enough time to just sit with the emotions we were feeling in the season. 
which is why it needed to be 10 episodes as well, not only to answer the questions, but to have enough time to really understand the emotions all the characters were going through and for us as audiences to feel it with them. AI normally does not let you do that when writing piece, pieces, creative writing, whatever, because it's a robot system, it doesn't really feel emotions and it just can't produce emotions in the same way we produce as humans emotions because it's it, it just pulls information and puts it together so they can't put that sort of emotional weight into stories. So finally let's like really get into the ending. I said before that I really liked it and the fact that um it, it was the only ending that made sense. What I I was bawling my eyes out. I'm like, no, this can't be real. This can't be happening. There's no way this is actually going to happen. Surely Five's going to think of a way out of this at the very last minute. No. But I really like that Hazel and Agnes was in the, were in the ending. The Swedes as well. Don't really understand why the family survived and how the train system projected them. We needed that train system. I cannot believe there was no point to that train system except for Lila and Five. They needed to use it to explain why the family survived instead of Lila and Five. Do you know what I mean? Like, they needed to utilize it very differently. And they chose not to do that. We also saw the handler, Grace. I love that she had a little kid and a little baby. I personally like to think it's Diego reincarnated. <laughs> you know, I have the personal belief that eventually all these kids were born into their families in some way because you saw with um Victor's parents Victor's mom and uh Ben's parents mom slash mom they were all kind of, it's my assumption that they were all in love in some way and that's why the Marigold chose them so it's my assumption that they, they eventually were born into those families for those couples and that's how they were reincarnated other than that you know, they were all reincarnated into marigolds. And I, I, I was sobbing at that, you know. An essence of them is there in some way. Although I, yes, the headcanon I have is that eventually they were born to those couples. But yeah, the canon part is that they their essence is in their person is in those marigolds, the eight marigolds at the end of the show. That was a really good ending. I think that was a really sweet ending that they did. And I definitely should have been the ending instead of a mid credit scene ending. And it was, a, it was a really sweet ending, you know, but at the same time, everything that led up to it and the emotional payoff for the whole se series, it shouldn't, it should, they shouldn't have done it at all. <laughs> it just shouldn't have been written by AI. You know, and just speculation, it was written by AI, but it was written by AI. It was because of the writer's strike and, you know, a bunch of shows had the same thing happen to them all the way back in 2008. And it is an unfortunate circumstance of getting more rights for the writers. If only the film industry in Hollywood actually didn't exploit writers, we wouldn't be in this position. Don't exploit writers and people in Hollywood in the future. And we're not going to end up really bad productions like this. Guys, come on. Treat people right. Anyways, guys, that was my immediate reaction on the Umbrella Academy Season 4. I hope you enjoyed this video and my absolute disaster of a reaction. And hopefully stay safe out there with how the fandom is on fire right now. Be careful. It's a scary place right now. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and comment down below. What did you think of season four of the Umbrella Academy? Who is your favorite character? Who did you hate most in this season? Um, I hated uh, Lila and Five the most in this season because Diego deserved better. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, but I've been CJ and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.